I'm Judith Sweet. Welcome to What's Cooking. I've called today's show Say Cheese and I'm sure these recipes will produce a smile. Cheese is extremely versatile and a rich source of protein and fat. Low fat cheeses are also available. Today's recipes are mainly using cheddar which is a firm cheese with a flavour that varies depending on the length of time it has to mature. When you're storing cheese always keep it cool and covered. I'm going to commence with some delightful cheese rolls which have a phyllo pastry crust and are then served with a tasty peppercorn sauce. Remember when using phyllo pastry to always keep it covered with a um, clean damp tea towel or some um, plastic wrap or something like that because it does dry extremely quickly and it is rather difficult to work with under the lights. Now these rolls have a very tasty filling. They are quite large and of course you could alter the size by using half sheets of pastry. In the um, container here I have a very colourful and certainly tasty selection of ingredients. In about 20 to 25 grams of melted butter I've softened one medium diced onion, a cup of chopped salami or you could use some ham or chicken there, a green capsicum just finely sliced, you can see the thin slices there, and one and a half cups of chopped or sliced mushrooms. So that's a, a as I said, a very nourishing and colourful and tasty combination of ingredients. And to that I'm going to add two cups of grated cheddar cheese. I'm using the tasty variety and a couple of tablespoons of fresh chopped parsley and just a grating of pepper. I don't think it needs any extra salt because the salami is quite salty and cheese too I find to be quite salty. So just a little um, freshly ground pepper there. Then these ingredients are just mixed together. You can imagine how delightful this is when, um, when they're cooked and out of the oven, cut the parcels and the cheese will flow through and be very tasty and topped with a peppercorn sauce. Now I've already brushed one sheet of pastry with some butter or you could use oil if you wished and keeping the remaining pastry covered with the damp cloth so that the edges won't dry. Have an extra about 60 grams of melted butter on hand so that um, you can brush these and this mixture will make four really hearty sized rolls which would be plenty for a lunch dish and um, I think I really would be inclined to perhaps make eight smaller ones and then you could have a second one if you if you so wish because they really are quite large so you would need to because I'm going to make four from this mixture quarter that uh, mixture in the jug as you can see it's quite a lot and this would um, really need nothing more than a lovely fresh salad tossed in a little vinaigrette and um, this is topped with a peppercorn sauce and you'd find that you'd have a really tasty and delightful dish and then just roll that and place that on a prepared tray or well, I'm using a non-stick tray so I don't have to grease that but while you're waiting you really do need to cover these with with the butter or some oil because it does dry and it just cracks so make sure you do butter the outside of each one as you complete it so that it won't dry out and they're very easily made all of that can be prepared in advance and they're cooked in a fairly hot oven about 200 degrees for about 15 minutes until they're crunchy and golden and then they're topped with a very simple peppercorn sauce which I'll show you later. Now I'll just leave that to the side for a moment and have to be very busy in our break to um, complete those and go on now to a very colourful casserole and this of course today everything has some cheese in it so um, I hope you like cheese but of course you could also make this casserole and miss the cheese out. It's a fish casserole and I've called it a rosy fish casserole because it has some tomato soup over it and, it's, and it really is a lovely colour. I'm using an um, oven proof glass casserole here today and I've lightly greased that. In the bottom of that I'm placing four firm white fish fillets. I've got some flounder fillets there. So they're just placed in the bottom and on the top of that half of the cheese is sprinkled so I've got one and a half cups I'm going to sprinkle about three quarters of a cup this is one of those things that you could guess at it doesn't really have to um, have to be totally accurate and on the top of that sprinkle half a cup of I'm using rice shaped pasta Rossini you've probably seen that in the shops or an alternative to that would be some um, of some brown rice which you've just lightly cooked because it will continue to cook in the oven. So I'm going to sprinkle that on the top and then some bacon 
about three rashers of chopped bacon and this also has a layer of baby corn which is going to make it look most attractive. I've drained the corn, just place that on the top and then a combination of sliced mushrooms and spring onion. So about a cup of um, sliced mushrooms and half a cup of spring onion and I've used quite a few of the green tops there because they, I know that they're very young and they also add colour to this lovely dish. Doesn't it look good through the side there? Now about 180 mils of um, tomato soup. I've bought this can's 300 so I'm not going to use it all. And then just a half a cup of water. That's just poured over the top. That'll help cook the pasta. And then that's popped in a moderate oven for about 30 minutes and then removed and the, the remainder of the cheese put on the top for the last 10 minutes. We'll put that in the oven and I'll continue making the rolls while we take a break. More cheese dishes, this time a soup which is a little different. I'm making a pumpkin chowder and in the uh, pan I have three rashers of bacon which um, I softened in the heat and to that I've added two finely sliced leeks. Remember when you're using leeks that you must be very very careful about washing them because they tend to gather up soil as they push their way through the earth. You need to split them in half and run lots of running water through them to make sure you remove any of that grit. And so there you can see that I've had that just uh, simmering away. It doesn't really need any oil because of the uh, fat on the bacon. If you have very lean bacon you may need to put just a very slight smear in the bottom. And to that I'm going to add three cups of chicken stock and so that um, my potatoes didn't go brown because I've prepared them a little in advance, um, I've had the potatoes soaking in um, the, or sitting into the chicken stock and I have 250 grams of diced potatoes, can you see just a small dice and 250 grams of diced pumpkin. And this is going to be served like that, not pureed, it is a chowder and so you need to cut the pieces of um, vegetables the size that you wish to serve. And you'll find this to be a very, very tasty dish. As I said, some of these dishes, if you're really not a cheese fan, you could still use the recipes because this would be fine just as it is um, and with the milk and some oregano added. But just before serving, when, once the vegetables have simmered and are nice and soft, about 15 minutes, I don't want them to break up, I still want them to hold their shape but yet be soft and palatable. Once they've done that, which as I said will only take about 15 minutes, then just before serving I'm going to add one cup of warm um, milk and one and a half cups of grated cheese. If you really want to be naughty you could put half milk, half cream in there but it really isn't essential. You've got quite a large fat content in the cheese. And once again I'm using tasty cheddar cheese. And that's a colourful combination there. We'll serve quite a few, very easy to multiply, just add another cup of chicken stock powder and uh, stock, I'm sorry, and um, a little more potato and pumpkin and um, you're fine, you've just multiplied that without any problems at all. Just a little extra uh, ground pepper in there too, black pepper I mean, and you could also add some salt to that later on, so season it to your taste, it all depends on how salty your chicken stock was that you've used. Now on to a different sweet, I'm going to uh, use some cream cheese and often we think of that being used in cheesecakes or perhaps as a dip, but today I'm making a frozen dessert from that and in this container I have 250 grams of softened cream cheese and to that I'm going to add um, a quarter to a half a cup of honey, I'm using about a quarter of a cup because I don't want it too sweet um, but that really depends on your taste so if you like things fairly sweet you could add between a quarter and a half of a cup of clear honey to that. And then this is going to have one cup of chopped dates added and a can of drained crushed pineapple. I'm just going to mix those ingredients together and then I'm going to fold half a cup of cream which I've whipped. Now there is a difference between half a cup of whipped cream and half a cup of cream whipped. You'll find that if you whip half a cup of cream you'll end up with a greater volume. So you'll probably have about three quarters of a cup of cream then to fold in because of the air which you've included. So that looks an unusual combination but it really is a very pleasant dessert. And you could use the uh, pineapple juice that you've drained from the, from the pineapple and perhaps thicken that with a tiny little corn flour 
and add a liqueur to that and serve that as a sauce with it. And it's very rich, very tasty, and it then goes into the freezer. It doesn't need beating or anything like that, so it's very simple. And um, I've just lined this tray. You could use an ordinary ice cream tray. I've lined it with some plastic wrap because it's easy to take out and, and to cover. And then you would just serve that in slices or in small scoops that um, I can assure you won't need very much of it, but it is a very nice dish. If you don't like dates, don't say, I won't make that. Think, well, perhaps I can put something else in it, even some dried apricots through that, or perhaps some cherries if you wish. Um, you could do even a combination of, of fruits to make that a little different. But you'll find that the pineapple seems to take some of the richness of the cream. And I've also added some lemon rind to that on occasions and just a little lemon juice to uh, make it appear not quite so rich. So that is a very simple dessert using cream cheese. I have a couple of interesting, sorry about that, a couple of interesting um, cream cheeses here too. This is um, the Neufertel with the chocolate and strawberry through that. And so you could use that as a replacement for the plain cream cheese that I've used and that's readily available. So I'm just going to put that into the freezer now. And as I said, serve that in fairly small slices. Now the soup's bubbling away here. So I'll just give that a slight stir on the way. And remember, don't add the cheese to that um, too soon. Now we'll just go on to a very simple salad. have the ingredients all here. It's a pasta salad mixed with some cheddar cheese as well. Surprise, surprise. And I've used some shell noodles. You'll need about two cups of noodles and cook those in a little salted water. They only take about 10 to 15 minutes. And then this is coloured with some very finely diced red capsicum. You need superb ingredients when you're going to make a salad so that they um, are really fresh because there's nothing to disguise them. And also I have about eight spring onions, which I've chopped fairly finely, and I've cubed about 250 grams of cheddar cheese there. And I'm just going to mix this all together. You could uh, choose whichever pasta you wish, whichever design you like. And I'm just going to pop the cheese in, and the spring onion, and capsicum. And then that's just going to be combined with about a quarter of a cup of French dressing. And you could serve some mayonnaise or some more dressing separately for people to add as they wish. I'll just combine all these lovely looking ingredients together while we take a break. I've just removed the fish casserole from the oven. I'm going to uh, pop the remaining three quarters of a cup of grated cheddar cheese onto the top of that. And that'll only take between five and ten minutes to melt and go a golden brown. In fact, I, I'll just leave that out and um, we'll pop that in in a few minutes, ready for presentation. And I'll look at the, now look at the cheese puffs. The cheese rolls, they sound and look good and smell delicious too. And you'll notice that I did put those on a tray with a surround around that, and that was in case any of the butter, because there was a high butter content there, came out during the cooking, and it will save you cleaning the oven. Now the pasta salad, I've mixed together there, and that looks very attractive, doesn't it? Almost a confetti salad, and I'll pop that into the salad bowl in a little while. And now on to a dip. As I said, we can hardly have cheese without a dip, but today I'm using cottage cheese instead of um, cream cheese, so they, they both are very useful in a dip. And I'm using an avocado. You need to choose a really ripe one for this so that it will mash well. And to get the stone out, you just need to tip the uh, point of a sharp knife in there and give it a little twist and you'll find that it will remove very readily. And so into a container I'm putting one large ripe peeled avocado, 250 grams of cottage cheese. Now you could use cream cheese for this to substitute that if you don't have it or you could use ricotta. So that's really your choice but I'm using the cottage cheese. And then I'm going to um, mince a clove of garlic with a little salt. I've cut the garlic and taken the little green centre out of that because that does add bitterness, bitterness. And then just with a knife, just crush that until you get a nice paste. And then that's added to the, um, the dip. 
and of course that's one of those ingredients that you could omit instead of using that for you want something milder you could add some chopped chives or some tiny um, slices of spring onion perhaps and then it's flavored with one and a half tablespoons of lemon juice and uh, I'm sure that doesn't have to be too accurate there just a squeeze of that I think I've probably got about the right amount and of course I checked that for pips beforehand and I'm just going to blend this together now with um, with the bar mix and then later on I'm going to stir through 250 grams of sour cream the lemon juice also helps to prevent the avocado from going discoloured which does sometimes happen so don't peel the avocado too far in advance and this um, can be presented with some perhaps corn chips or small crackers make sure you've got a suitable knife there for spreading um, or some fresh vegetables I think it'll look very colourful and I'm going to use that today to um, serve with it I've got some sour cream and chive corn chips and those flavours should be compatible and also a lovely selection of fresh vegetables. You can see how readily that pulps and that's the reason why you need to have a really ripe avocado. You'll find that it won't pulp at all if it's if it's woody and you can test that when you go um, to the fruit market just by very softly putting your thumb on top and if it's soft you'll be able to feel uh, it give way a little under the pressure of your thumb. So um, you can choose quite a selection of vegetables. I have some here which I've already partly prepared and some that you may not have thought of before like snow peas they really if they're nice and fresh they're usually crisp and because this is a quite a soft dip once it gets 250 um, grams of sour cream folded through there it'll be quite soft and the snow peas would be a very good um, dip scooper there and the baby carrots which I've scrubbed and I'm going to trim those tops a little and serve those they'll be attractive also a lovely red cap capsicum which I'll, I'll cut down into some wedges and you'll be able to use that as a scoop the same with some fresh zucchini and some celery sticks and so you will find that you can make this um, part of the meal not too loaded with calories and very nutritious and certainly very attractive looking now just the um, peppercorn sauce which we're going to add onto the cheese rolls in the small saucepan you'll only need a small saucepan for this I have one rounded tablespoon of corn flour and to that I'm going to add 300 mils of cream and one tablespoon of drained green peppercorns I'm using the ones from a can because they are a little softer and I think will be better in the sauce so just mix the corn flour to a paste like that I've already put a tiny amount of the cream in there to do that and then it's heated until it just thickens don't boil this and that's served over those phyllo cheese rolls and so it's really quite a luscious dish 300 mils of cream into there and a tablespoon of the drained green peppercorns and the peppery flavor helps to cut some of the richness of the the pastry and um, and also the cheese inside there and of course it is a very tasty dish and as I said before I'd serve that with just a very simple tossed salad so I'm just putting that on a low heat there now we'll pop the um, fish casserole into the oven for the cheese to melt and turn golden and then you'll be able to see the finished product at presentation time just turning that down a little there and so now I'll go on and prepare some of these vegetables ready for the dip just going to put them into pieces that can easily be dipped in and you've still got enough room left to to hold so make sure that you remember that when you're preparing the vegetables I'm just going to slice the zucchini into slices like this which will be fine I'm sure and arrange them on this platter this is very easy for serving if you've got your dip in one container and um, the dippers in the other it's rather difficult sometimes passing it around and more difficult for people if they have a drink in their hand and so um, I think it's a good idea to choose a dish that you can combine everything on there so I'm just going to arrange these and cut up the rest of the vegetables ready for this really tasty and attractive avocado dip and we'll take a break now and come back soon with our presentation mm. 
I have the frozen dessert here. Of course, I had to make one at home so that it would freeze in time, but it does look rather attractive. I've garnished that with some chocolate leaves, which I painted onto some lilac leaves, actually, and I have a few little chocolate cases, which I filled it up. And I mentioned before that you could perhaps thicken up the um, pineapple juice that, you've tr that you drain from the crushed pineapple, and a little liqueur in that, and you've got a really yummy dessert, and that's made from cream cheese. And remember the other flavoured cream cheeses that I mentioned to you. You can see on the table our superb display of cheese, this wonderful block cheese in the cloth, which um, I think is always superb. And I've just garnished the um, table with some various breads and different cheeses there. And we have a very colourful array of ingredients and dishes on the table. And the pumpkin soup, I added the one and a half cups of grated cheese and a cup of milk just before serving. And that really looks quite appetising, with the pumpkin still holding its shape there and um, we're just going to garnish that with a tiny little of this pretty mustard crisp. So that's the pumpkin chowder and the avocado dip. You can see I have quite a selection of these superb looking fresh vegetables there and I've, you could um, put a few toothpicks on the table so that you could make the picking up of the cherry tomato easier and dipping into this dip. And you can see the easy consistency so it really is quite easy to manage. The rosy fish casserole, you can see why I chose to cook this in a glass dish and this is an oven proof glass dish which is most attractive and I have uh, sat that onto a softened mat so that it wouldn't um, be too cold. The pasta salad which I think looks attractive and I've served that with a little extra mayonnaise there and these delightful looking golden cheese rolls made from phyllo pastry. I'm sure you'll really enjoy those. Remember that they can be substituted with perhaps some chicken, diced cooked chicken, or some ham in that, and then just topped with this peppercorn sauce. Remember too to have the right tools when you're serving cheese, the cheese slice for the hard cheddars, and um, or this one, which is just a little different too, shaves it off very thinly, and something to cut hard blocks and to pick it up. So it's handy if you have those around. It makes everyone's job much easier. I hope you really enjoy these recipes and um, enjoy using cheese to its full advantage and you can see what a variety of dishes can be made from cheese.